Praise the Lord. This is Evangelist Charles Kruger. Welcome to today's broadcast. We're going to practice the present presence of the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray in tongues and read the Gospel of John chapter 15, 16 and 17. Last night we read 14 and 15. We're going to pray in tongues. The purpose of these broadcasts is to pray together with the saints and to practice the present presence of the Holy Spirit. The Lord spoke to me and said, don't just teach the people about the presence, but show them how to enter in. Show them how to go into the secret place and enjoy their relationship with me and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And so that's what we are going to do. It's very cold <laughs> in Clarksdorp today in South Africa. Well, it's not that cold, but not comparison to, to what they have in Canada, but <laughs> we can feel it. My fingers... <laughs> anyway, so I've got my hot chocolate ready. We're going to drink some hot chocolate with Jesus in the presence of the Holy Spirit, in the cozy presence of the Comforter, of the Holy, the Holy Comfort, the Holy Cozy. There's coziness and comfort in holiness. Hallelujah. Mm. So get your hot chocolate ready. Bre bazekete. So where are you guys watching from? Marie Bota, bless you. Hilary Maynard, bless you. Juliet, Natalie, Tishka. Hallelujah. Get your communion elements ready. We're going to have communion as well. We're going to have an awesome time in the Lord tonight. Zibrendo, Zakande, Leviz, Dagando. So get yourself somewhere where you can pray in tongues, where you can pray out loud and you don't have to scream. But pray in tongues where you won't be disturbed. And uh, just tune in and tune into the Spirit. Become sensitive to the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is when we are aware of Him that we agree or acknowledge or recognize His presence. In other words, you have faith that He is here now. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. He that comes to God must believe that He is. So you must believe that He is present. It's the present presence of the Holy Spirit. You believe that He is. You are aware of Him. You recognize Him. You acknowledge Him. And that He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. In other words, you become aware of the presence of the Lord and you become the gateway through which the miracles that is, and the blessings with which you have already been blessed in spirit in heavenly pleasure, the spiritual blessings... You become the gateway through which they manifest and you give birth by becoming aware of the presence of the Lord and being in fellowship with Him and communion with Him. Hallelujah. So that's the purpose. Praise Jesus. And uh, awesome testimonies are coming in through these live broadcasts. It's really amazing what the Lord is doing. And while we are praying and practicing the present presence of the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to teach tonight, not that I know of, Tomorrow we'll talk about fasting and so on. We've had a request from Michelle. She wants to know more about fasting. And man, we've got some stuff to cover tomorrow. We're going to have a prophetic prayer storm. So 4 p.m. Saturday evening. If you're watching the rerun, the Lord bless you and join in right now. If you're new to Loveborn, just practice the presence with us. Put the phone on. I don't know if the noise of the music bothers. I, I saw the broadcast last night. The music was a bit loud, I think. How's the music now? Is it okay? Well, I can hear it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to practice the presence. We're going to pray in tongues for about half an hour. Then we're going to jump right into the word. And we're going to read John chapter 15. Or excuse me, John chapter 16 and 17. The Lord spoke so clearly to us. And it's so relevant for a time such as this. The time that we're walking in now. He said, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. Hallelujah. Fear not. Do not let your heart be troubled. The comforter will come. I will come unto you. And me and my father will make our abode with you. You're not alone. You're not outcast. You belong to the fellowship of the saints in the house of my father. There's many dwelling places. You're a dwelling place of God. And you are in the household. You're accepted in the beloved. A part, a member in particular of the fellowship of the saints. And you're accepted in the beloved. No matter what your problems and your situations are, no matter what things, I want you to take a moment and cast your cares and your burdens onto Jesus, for He cares for you. No matter what 
trouble and turmoil and torment and terror has been in your life up until now, take a moment, take a break, take a vacation in the spirit to the secret place of the Most High so that we can come into that place of peace and victory. And from that place of the spirit, of the secret place of victory, you rule and you reign in Christ Jesus. You can't do it in your own strength. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And so we've got this beautiful privilege by the shed blood of the Lamb of God. He is the way. No man comes to the Father except through me, Jesus said. We come to the Father by the blood of Jesus that opened up the veil, the veil that was rent from top to bottom. His body was rent like a veil. It was rent so that through his body, his broken body, you can come in. So take a moment, take a breather, take a break from your worry, from your stress, from the panic, from the anxiety, the depression, the cravings. Take a break for an hour to come into the presence of the Lord. And I promise you, you will never leave here the same way that you came. It is in the presence of the Lord that we see miracles. It's not outside of the presence. There, there is miracles in the presence of the Lord. In the Where Jesus is, there's always miracles. You can't but be blessed because God is a giving God. He's a generous God. He's a loving God. He's got unconditional love. He is love. You can't be in His presence and have an encounter and experience with Him and live the same and your life looks the same. It will change. That's the promise. We believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So let's jump in without further ado. Pray in tongues while I'm praying in tongues. Pray in tongues. Post your prayer requests. Get to the place. Get into the glory cloud. Step out of your troubles and step into the glory. Step into the victory. And for the next few moments, as we pray together, as we read the word, live and breathe and have your being in your victory, in the victory of the cross that's been procured for you. Live in your victory for a moment. And later on, hopefully you'll start abiding there. You'll, you'll stay there. And that's the place of victory. Maybe in the beginning you visit. But the more and more you fall in love with Jesus and the more He awakens love, the more you will live your life from that place. And that's, what, that's the place in His present presence that life was always meant to be lived in. It was never meant to be lived outside. When we live our lives without the Holy Spirit, without His presence, without an awareness of Him, we, we live a life that is so far, it falls so far short of the glory. But there is the presence of the Lord that is full of joy. At His right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. And so let's jump in there. And let's do it daily and consistently. And while we're praying tonight, in tongues and reading the word and just practicing the presence of the Lord and having sweet communion with Jesus and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, be aware that there is an impartation taking place and an activation and God is awakening love through the love born broadcast. That's the anointing that I carry. It's to awaken love in hearts for Jesus to, to release an impart, to stir the flame or to stir the gift and to fan the flame. It's a reviving anointing. So while you're watching, Try and pray in tongues with us. Try and get your Bible. Get your Bible. And as we read John 16 and 17, read your Bible with us and follow with us as we read the Bible, as we read the Holy Word of God. Your life is going to be changed. Take a break from the restlessness, from the turmoil, from the struggles, from the fight, from the battle. Take a break. Take a breather. The reason people are feeling like they can't go on and they want to give up and they are weary and well-doing is because they're not filled up. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not unsaved anymore. or You're not um, backslidden. You just need to be filled continually. When the word speaks of being full, I saw a sermon of Dutch Sheets. He preached yesterday or the day before talking about 
but be ye filled with the Spirit. I think it was that sheet. Be ye filled with the Spirit as the connotation of being constantly filled. It's not a one-time experience. It's not once I was filled and now I am just filled. No. Be filled with the Spirit. In other words, constantly continue in the vine, abide in the vine, draw from the sap of the true vine. That's what we read in John chapter 14 and 15. He is the true vine. And we got to draw and be filled continually, continuously, consistently in the presence of the Lord. That's where you filled. And it's not about eloquence of speech or the how many words and how long you can pray. But it's about time spent with Him in His presence because the anointing of Jesus rubs off. The anointing can rub off on you. When you spend time with Jesus, His anointing rubs off on you. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. So let's pray in tongues. And as I'm praying in tongues, you guys pray in tongues with me. Mengu, Sakande, Vildabando, Rubushi, Kada, Babra, Gindu, Rel, Livindo, Lorzontro, Nastakande, Ribi, Gazaka, Teri, Libedro, Rel, Dano, Shata, Kabra, Bambon, Dene, Meheri, Divido, Rododo, Doromosa, Orodo, Zintaran, Inkian, Delemendo, Rambregande. Some of you are getting new languages in the Spirit. You're stirring up yourself. You're jumping up. You're shaking yourself. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. Just like Samson shook himself. Samson shook himself and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Rel, Dibinda, Raga, Zaka, Tene, Megu, Zaka, Tene, Mango. And you're edified and you're building up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You keep yourself in the love of God. Because constantly these revelations of the Spirit. Rebagando. While I'm speaking and while I'm interpreting the tongues, you just continue to pray in tongues under your breath. Rel de vida baragaza katana masokuta. Zel de didiriando rolomo zongundanga zakata. Lord, let there be a culmination, a coming together, a, a con. con Agglomeration, what do you call it? Reva Duguzaka, just all the rivers coming together. Rel de Giza Katana Mashoko Takambangu. Reve de Gizanto, Indano Shandre Menda Lavangra Gis Gardelisto, Sar de Levizacre, Lohrungu, Rakradanga. Some of you might see visions and be caught up in trances and see things in the spirit. Rel de Nininga Zantro no Mosoto. While you're busy praying in tongues, you are in the spirit. You're not in the flesh. Leza da Barabato. The understanding is unfruitful. Tinda Angando. Rebrabando. Robo Sekete. Your spirit man is gaining ascendancy. Rebagando. And taking the lead because you're building up yourself. You're charging yourself. You're edifying yourself. Rivadanga zaka paka telebekete, and as he gains ascendancy, his influence over your soul and over your body increases, even over your bank account. Sando robokota, you're releasing the rivers flowing into your imagination, flowing into your mind, your thought lives, your emotions. Nembardaga zakata, some of you need your emotions to be anointed by the Holy Spirit, because your emotions has been in a state of fallen, a fallen state. Where you, you, it's turmoil and it's up and down and it cycles and it's this way and, and it's tossed with tempest and not comforted. Oh, afflicted. Revakata. Here the Spirit of the Lord is coming as the comforter tonight and He is healing you and He's binding up broken hearts. Le zakata rabato robo sekete. And it will be evident in your life because people will know that you've been with Jesus and there will be a peace about you. And when you walk into situations and you walk into circumstances and places and rooms, that the atmosphere itself will change because of the carrying, the presence that you're carrying, the anointing that's on your life, the hand of God that's resting heavily upon you. And because of the sensitivity in your heart, because you have prayed in tongues and learned how to surrender to the Spirit and yield your body and your members a living sacrifice unto the Holy Spirit so that He can pray the perfect prayer according to the will of God for the saints through you. Reba Gaza Katalamanto. You walk as a as a conduit, as a as a housepipe, as a a channel through which God manifests and His live, rivers of living waters will flow through you. Rebo Gozaka, I see the sluice gates just opening up and this this mighty rush of the rivers of living water, just living water, just 
filled with life, not stagnant, not still, but living. Rambondo Zanga de Sate, Lizutra Bagade, Ervandolush Karabasete, Rendona Mahante, Hallelujah, Rebegezaka Tabagado Robote, Arba Jete Kite Lebekoto, Romonongo Zaka Tebade Robozando, Libre Bangedinga Zata Taradabakata, Libre Dezekete, and you walk into rooms and you walk into places and situations and deals and business deals and and the normal things that just happen in life and you walk in and you are a man of peace and you walk in and change the atmosphere and you arrest the atmosphere and you take it captive you take captivity captive girdaza elendo jando mostoconde van der renemendo and you bring solutions and you bring change because you have been busy with the things of god you've been sowing to the spirit and now you are reaping the things of the spirit you're bearing fruit and your life is fruitful and pleasing unto the father gizate lejando rodo Bongo, manda dendo rosta kande. Things that you will do that you have never thought you had, the, you will ever have the courage to do. You're going to walk into situations where other people will not dare to walk into. You'll walk into places where angels fear to tread. You'll walk into places and change the atmosphere and turn a bad situation, what the devil meant for evil, into the the blessing of the Lord. Into he, he turns it around for our good and he's going to use you for it. The reason that we are find, finding, many of us are finding ourselves in desert places many times, in desert places, in wilderness experiences, is because God, he's not exiled you, God wants to use you to bring order there and to bring a river there and to find a garden there. He wants you to be a manifest son of God. And when we walk in the spirit and talk in the spirit and live in the spirit and we move in the spirit, the, just flowing in the rivers of living water, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. That's when there is a river that's released and it's the realm of the miraculous. It is the foothold of the supernatural in the natural world, in a physical world. The foothold of the spirit of God, the one foothold that he's got. Is for you, the saints that are filled with the Holy Spirit, to surrender yourself and your time and redeem the time and watching with all persistence to pray in the Spirit, in the Holy Ghost. And thereby, He comes in and invades your life and manifests His glory. And through that, that he, you, you plugged in as a son of God and you're building up your faith. And it's an absolute privilege to allow the Holy Spirit the one foothold that He directly has in this physical, tangible, natural world. Pray in tongues while I'm speaking. While we're praying in tongues, the anointing is destroying yokes. While we're praying in tongues, the one foothold that the Holy Spirit has is... When we surrender our mouths and our bodies as a living sacrifice, it bypasses the understanding because normally things would come through the understanding and your mind would choose to obey or choose to disobey. But when you surrender the mind and you surrender your thoughts and your understanding and you surrender it to the leading of the spirit man and the Holy Spirit, because we one spirit with him, we joined with the Lord. When we surrender to the Spirit, your thought life is anointed and your emotions are anointed and you get holy emotions instead of evil emotions. And the evil emotions, the stress, the worry, the fear, the torment, the sorrow, the grief, anxiety, all that stuff, the bitterness, the offense, it kills you, it makes you sick. But when you can think the thoughts of God, so when we're praying in tongues, Mendu Rabakata, Lebre di Gazato Runumosto, when we pray in tongues, we start thinking the revelations, we start thinking about the wisdom of God, the strategies, the spirit of wisdom and understanding and revelation is coming upon you. Robo Sekete, the great teacher is yet to teach us. We need not that any man teach us, but the Holy One and the anointing and the unction that we have received of the Holy One teaches us of all things and we need Need not that any man teach us. Now, as we pray in tongues, it's a revelational gift. Rebaba, elebendo robo zakata, le zedibindo roto, angande nemeste, ravazaka telebezo. We pray in tongues, mondo jata tatarada karadabate. And as we pray in tongues, the mysteries, the mysteries, the unknown things, 
the glory of God, that's that the hidden things of God is being revealed because it's a revelational gift. It's got everything to do with building your faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you hear the word, that's where faith comes from. But you cannot hear unless the Holy Spirit reveals it, unless the Holy Spirit teaches it. But you are the steward of your own edification. You don't have to wait for one day in the street by and by. That spirit of postponement, that doctrine of delay, is those, those, those things that used to limit you is gone. It's in the past. This is a new day. It's a time where you can take your victory and your miracle because you want to, intentionally and on purpose. And you can pray in tongues because you're the steward of your own edification. When you pray in tongues, you edify yourself. And you can pray in tongues for hours and hours and hours. In fact, the word says persist thereon. In, persevere in tongues. Reba gato kulo robo zakata. There where he speaks of the armor of God. Then afterwards he says, now I know people are putting on the armor and I put on the helmet and I put on the breastplate and I put on and, I, and, and you go through your little ritual. But that's not what it's talking about. It's not formula. It's praying in tongues. It's walking in the word. It's thinking thoughts of salvation. It is Knowing that your heart is righteous and you've got a new nature in you. It's raising the shield of faith. Believing that God will come through and you believe that he's good and you believe that he loves you. And that, that's how you keep yourself in the love of God. When you pray in tongues. Because mm -hmm. love inspires faith. You, could, you need new, fresh, daily revelations. Rebagata. Of the love of God. Of the word of God. Of the person of Jesus. You need a fresh encounter. You need personal contact. You need experiences real one-on-one -on -one, face to face encounters with Jesus on a daily basis and that's where your life changes and that's where revelation changes your life and it causes your the entire di trajectory of your life to change and the degrees are shifting and you are refocused and redirected and God delegates you and you are empowered for the journey ahead. Relendos. Le rabagataka rebakoto. Bre badongo robo sakata. I highly recommend praying in tongues about one hour a day for every believer. Every believer at least. Rejatike. You'll see a significant change in your life. God's been speaking to you for a while now to, to get into the presence and these once in a lifetime events rise up and keep you from praying and days and weeks and months and years go by and we are standing at a time where the world will never be the same says the lord just continue praying in tongues we're standing in a time where the world will never be the same where those of the mainstream the mainstream the 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 liberal the I'll call it what you will they infiltrated the Every sector of society, they've in infiltrated education, they've infiltrated the judicial systems, they've in infiltrated politics, they've, they're everywhere, it's the spirit of the world, it's anti-Christ, anti-anointing. And they've got this whole, this whole thing, and, and you cannot do business as usual, you've got to now go into the kingdom of God. It's time to pray, it's like breath, it's like breathing, it's like eating, it's like sleeping, it's living. You need the presence of the Lord. It's not optional. If you want to live a successful and a prosperous Christian life, and you want to live a life that is fruitful unto God, without me you can do nothing, Jesus said. We can hear it, we can say amen, we can cheer, we can share it, we can like it. But unless we start praying and making time with Jesus, unless we go into the presence we just hearers of the word and not doers of the word. But the word of God invites you and it's an urgent invitation. It's not just, oh, well, if you feel like it, one day you can pray and one day you can come closer. No, this is the time you, you need to come closer to the Lord. But God cannot force you because you can't. It's not a formula, but he can invite you and he can continue to invite you over and over and over and he'll never stop and he'll never quit until you say yes Lord and you start doing it and you get into the presence of the Lord and then you start enjoying you got to enjoy it 
Do it with a smile. It's not because you have to. It's because you want to. Your heart is in love with Jesus. And the, the wonderful thing about spending time with the Lord and praying in tongues and reading the word is the more you spend time with him, the more he wins your heart. The more he awakens love inside of you. <laughs> the more you love praying and spending time with him. Nothing compares with that. Nothing, 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 nothing in this world. Rela bagazaka to robo zebra bando. Ana Marie Berger, bless you in Jesus' name. Solo bozadi bajando romoso koto robosa. Vre babando, abide in the vine. John 15, yes, Sharon, sendo. Lizeda bado, rotoko to robosa ba. Le brena mahata. Zende rege zaka tene me shoko taba. Zeda da rada babra bindo. Lo robo zabre bando. Vregazita ordo sita la bagi zeka pakito pakatara prendone stere vida. Ha ha ha. Lezaga. Some of you might start laughing in the spirit. For those of you who have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, this is your time to receive by faith and to ask the Father, because He said, if we be incapable of doing evil, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will our Heavenly Father not give us the Holy Spirit of promise to those who ask Him? So ask Him. Ask Him. It's time. Jesus died in your place and for this reason, so that you can be filled, so that you can be washed clean of your sins and that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit just right now. Lord, I just release the fire of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and fire in the name of Jesus. I release it upon people that's trusting you for a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in Jesus' name, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, let the glory of God come upon them in a tangible, physical way, in an experiential way, that there will be a tangible presence of God, that there will be the oil of glory, the oil of joy, the oil of the Holy Spirit, just coming all over people right now. And if you've been praying in tongues and you've maybe had the same tongue for a while, God is bringing you new tongues, new tongues, new languages, songs, new songs, and new songs. Sing unto the Lord a new song tonight. Regan de la manga zanka, escura baza brada zete. Oh, glory. Some of you might start laughing in the spirit. It's that same place that joy comes from and laughter. That's where the Spirit of God speaks from. Zondo shate bagado lebedenga zaketero. It's not the same, same, but it feels like it's like ha 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 ha. You know that place. Reda gada bordo no sati pakarabarede is is coming from your belly, belly, your innermost being. Robo sakata la baraba sonde mana mahede bekitoba libre de bedere de vezete re de bekosam. While you're praying in tongues, you're praying the perfect prayer, and the Holy Spirit helps your infirmities. Because we don't know what we have to pray for as we ought. Seladana, jebre dengendo, zantana nanga. And situations are changing in your life. Oh, Rabaka, things are falling off of you. The troubles are being sorted out. Now you've released your troubles. You've cast your cares and your burdens on the, to, unto the Lord because He cares for you. And now you're in a place where you can be healed. Now you're in a place where you can be edified. Now you can be ministered to. And the Lord can wash your feet. And He can cleanse you. And He can purify you. And He can purge you. And He can prune you. And He can cut off the wrong things. And pull out the, the roots. And remove the little foxes. But you can't. The foxes can't be removed without the lord if you're not in his presence if you're not in fellowship with the lord if you're not in fellowship with the word you can try and remove the foxes you remove one and another one pops up they get babies <laughs> and they take over but the lord helps you he says we'll do it together so do it with the lord we cannot afford to go through life to go through one single day without spending time in prayer and in tongues and in the word of God. Lendeno mozandre jacaba escar de vezabre bozoto no mosekema lembane mezete paradasa and when you walk throughout the day you wash your dishes in the morning and you go through life and you take the children to school and whatever just pray in tongues driving driving in the car pray re le mozata baka put your radio off or put some worship music on pray in tongues let it be your habit. Let it be your the way about you. Let it be a trademark. Let it be your 
the thing people know you by, where you walk and pray in tongues. Zide rabakata, breba do lo mundo robo zambra, mendo robo zoto rodobose. When you continue to pray in tongues, you suddenly start seeing visions and dreaming dreams. There will be a a, a a a surge of a flood of visions and dreams. The more you pray in tongues, you'll dream dreams and you'll see visions. And when you're praying in tongues, many times. While you're busy with the things of the Spirit, while you're busy with the things of the Spirit, you just start thinking, your mind starts floating and drifting into a certain direction, and you start thinking about things, and, and you get ideas. Where does that come from? It's not your soul. It's the Spirit that's communicating with your soul. Because there has to be communication between your Spirit and your soul. But not your soul, your soul is not supposed to be in charge. Your spirit man is in charge. Because your spirit man is born again. Your soul man is being renewed by the washing of the water of the word. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you get ideas, you start thinking, well, it's just my imagination. <clears throat> it's just my imagination. And No, while you're busy with the things of God and you start seeing things. It's the Spirit of the Lord. Where do you think it comes from? You can't be busy with praying in tongues and soaking in the presence, in the presence of the Lord, ministering unto the Lord and be carnal at the same time. When you're in the presence, you can start getting solutions. You can get answers to your problems and your prayers. Things can start happening, but not outside. Without me, you can do nothing. Says the Lord. Without him, you can do nothing. Tonamanda, Dunamenge Zangede, Rebadanga Lingus Satro, Bo Zabra Banga Dengulus, Ashkadi Rea Atala Nintre, Altenos Toro do Cobra Titrala Setra Lindo, Refrelinder in the Hindi Catar da la Capraca. Ah, Brekibar, Bala Prapitono Mosa, Brabidanga, Rutica la Hankra Canta. It's time to get even more undignified. Some of you are too prim and proper. Sometimes, you got to let your hair down. You go robo, kick off your shoes. Elashata kabaganda rabaka and get real with God. Roprem bendenge zeki tiki ta rabaka ta. Maybe your life is just sorted and everything is fine and there's no not a care in the world. But what about the people going to hell, streaming to hell? What are we going to do about it? Because it's your and my privilege to lead them to Jesus. It's a very serious situation we find ourselves in, in the body of Christ. We cannot rightly minister the gospel. We cannot evangelize if we're not spending time in the presence of the Lord and have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you're going to make legalistic converts, but they're not going to be believers. You're going to just make false converts. They're going to be scared of hell, and that's the only reason that they come to church. But they have no relationship with God. And that's why the churches are filled with people that's calling themselves Christian. But they have they don't know God and God don't know. It's like, go go away from me. I don't know you. But when we are in love with Jesus, and that is where people are born again. And that's how they are born again. Because they're exposed to that kind of a ministry. Where you are anointed and you love Jesus. And the love of Jesus is flowing and oozing out of your life. They're going to get saved and radically saved. And they're going to be on fire for God and they will share their testimony because like father, like son. How are, we, how are we going to walk in a revival of love, says the Lord? How are we going to do that if we do not receive the love of the Father, if we do not enjoy spending time in the, in the presence of the Lord? And it's not that you must love on Him it's that he wants to love on you. So we deny him the pleasure of ministering to his bride. We deny him the, the pleasure of providing for you, healing you, blessing you. We want it without the intimacy. We want it without prayer. We want it without paying the price. We want it without going in and laying down the things of the world and the flesh by going and submitting ourselves unto the Lord. But there is no other way 
The only way is to approach God. Through the blood of Jesus, through the cross of Calvary. Remando lo moshete to be broken, to be contrite in spirit. Sedaba leveling zikitara dabata santo, so that the balm of Gilead can come upon you and the anointing can destroy the yoke and heal you and put ointment on your eyes and solve on your eyes. Marasata kite, so that you can see again. Nemana maraba zaba babado robo zekita bagando lide diriato robo shatra, and that's where this revival is going to be sustained from. Ungu Zakat is going to draw its resources from the presence of the Lord, the ministry, the healing, the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the demon possessed that set free, the dead that are raised, the wonders. It's going to draw its sustenance. It's going to be sustained by the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, abiding in the vine, being in the vine, engrafted, not visiting, but abiding, continuing, keeping. Consistently, braze pacato, robo zabra bendo lo mosha candem, ele bengo dus cadare dista relevete, vre badango robo sacata bababando robota bacatela, ele bende redivede bebe beridico to robota, ardano zandre le shecreandos, mbescordas, hachkele, filegis cadangos, lesta dando redebe. This isn't a privilege reserved just for the elite or just for those so-called vidbrekis or favorites of God. God has no favorites. He's not a respecter of persons. This is a privilege that is available to every born-again believer, every child of God, and come into the house of the Father and spend time in fellowship with the Father. And we have not because we ask not. We want everybody to do our praying for us. We want everybody to pray for us. We send our prayers to as many people as we possibly can. Our requests, we pray, we, we ask people to pray, but we don't want to have fellowship with God. God will not be mocked. He's not a muti shop. This is not, we're not busy with witchcraft. It's a real relationship with God. That's what's going to bring you into victory. Constant victory. Rele mazando roboko tono mondo. And it's not enough that you walk in it, you've got to invite others into the presence. When when you go into the presence and the love of God is awakened inside of you and ignited. There's the love for people. And you can't help but speak of the presence of the Lord. You can't help but just minister to people and invite them into what you've discovered and what the Lord is leading you into. And good news travel, travels fast. Why have the church not already evangelized the whole world? Maybe we've forgotten and lost sight of the fact that it's good news. Good news travels fast and the the more you realize it's good news and the more excited you become and the more in love with Jesus you are. Evangelism is the result of that. Evangelism is the fruit, it's the spontaneous outflow, a natural state of being of a saint of the Most High God is evangelizing and telling the good news of Jesus Christ. It's automatic, it oozes, you can't help yourself, you can't keep it in, you can't hold it in. I can't keep it in, I gotta let it out, world has got to see all the love that's in me. No, 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 you remember that song, don't let me, don't let me sing. Oh, you can't keep it in. You got to let it out. <laughs> the world has got to see all the love that's in me. Can't keep it in. You can't keep it in. Many of you have been stressing and fretting and worrying about the fact that you can't evangelize and that you don't have the boldness and that you can't. How am I ever going to be bold like that? How am I ever going to be free like that? And, and it, you intimidate it and you have the fear of man and it's like your hands are tied and you, you don't have any liberty and assurance and boldness. Get in the presence. Get in the presence. This is the key to evangelism. We're praying and we're asking God for a billion soul harvest. The prophecy said, I trust God for a generation to be saved. I'm talking about the, this generation must be saved. We're talking about a massive harvest of souls coming in. 
everywhere, every prophet you ever you put on these days, talking about a massive, except the doomsday prophets. They want to talk about doom and gloom and escaping and running away and leaving the whole world to the devil. <laughs> we're not talking about that. We take, we, we're taking over until he comes. And we're not going, he's coming, he's coming. He said, I'm coming. That's the second coming of the Lord. Not the going, the coming. He's coming. Robo zakata barende. We've got to conquer. We've got to occupy. Every enemy must be made his footstool. How are we going to bring in the harvest of souls? If we want, you can't fake evangelism anymore. Many people, many ministries used to fake it because it was the message of salvation and the gospel of salvation. But now it's the gospel of the kingdom. Also Dutch sheets. I listened to him last night. Go and Google, go and YouTube it. Him and Chuck Pierce are ministering, I think, in Malaysia. We've been preaching the gospel of salvation, but that's not going to do it anymore. And you've been reading the scriptures and you got your scriptures and you got your sermons worked out. And that worked and people got saved. But that's not going to work anymore. Now it's going to be the gospel of the kingdom. Now it's going to be real. Now, now it will be... How can you get people saved when it's superficial? When it's, when it's a show? When, it's, when there's no depth? When it's just an outward show, a performance? That's not going to get people saved anymore. What's going to get them saved is somebody walking in the presence of the Lord and introducing them into the manifest glory where they become aware of Jesus and they have life-changing face-to-face encounters with Jesus. That is what the born-again experience is. you got to have an encounter with Jesus. You can't hear about Him and make up your mind one day, well, I choose to believe. No, no. It's got to be a hard choice. You can't choose with your head to be saved. Oh, I choose to believe because the evidence is overwhelming. I mean, you don't even know Jesus. You choose to believe because the evidence is in the natural. It's by what you see and what you hear. It's your sense. Your, your salvation is, is founded upon the sense realm and that will never stand. You, you can't get saved in your head, in your mind, in your soul, and your reasoning before you get saved in your spirit your heart has got to be saved so you've got to have an encounter and we've got to be the carriers of the presence of the lord how are we going to evangelize the world if it's hard work to evangelize and we don't enjoy it and we go and we've got to you know pick up our cross and suffer for god and now we've got to go and we don't want to and nothing inside of you wants to preach and you're not happy and you're talking about the joy of the Lord, but it looks like you just come out of a funeral parlor. And you were not the one attending. You were the one <laughs> in the casket. <laughs> so you're coming with this look on your face and you want to tell people, oh, let me tell you about Jesus. He saved my life. And you can have what I have. <laughs> you know. They're going to look at you and they say, oh, what? I don't want what you've got. You've got to smile. You've got to be excited. You, they, it's got to be real. They've got to look. And the world's not blind. They're not stupid. They can see. And they've got to see something in you and in me that they desire. They've got to see Jesus looking out of our eyes, the windows of our soul. They've got to see the love of Jesus. They've got to see, like you speaking of one, like one having authority of conviction. You've got to have conviction because you've got to know what you're talking about. You've got to have a relationship with Jesus and it's all hands on deck. This is all hands on deck. You, we do not have an excuse anymore. What will you say to the Lord Jesus standing in front of him? And you've had opportunity upon opportunity and the opportunities, there's no less opportunities today than 10 years ago. And we're not going to have more opportunities in years to come to preach the gospel. In fact, it's going to get harder in the natural. If you're waiting for the convenient time to preach the gospel, wake up. It's not coming. You've got to preach, be ready in season, out of season, whether it's convenient or inconvenient. You've got to be ready now. He says, don't say in your hearts that it's still three or four months to the harvest. Look up. The harvest is ripe. It's white for the harvest. It's ripe. It's ready. It's now. This is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. We're not preaching about tomorrow is the day of salvation. 
No, this is the day of salvation. And what are we going to say to the Lord if He sends us, constantly sending us opportunity upon opportunity upon opportunity to minister, to testify, to tell the people about Jesus. But we're afraid of what they might think of us. Just Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God. It's the power of God to save the lost. How can we be ashamed of the gospel? Maybe we got to be saved first. And then we can preach the gospel. This is the time. It's, whether it's convenient or not. You make it convenient by the Spirit of the Lord and you trust God to open up doors and to speak to the people's heart and to work in the power of conviction and to bring conviction on people's lives so that they have an encounter with Jesus. But how can we do it if we don't practice the presence of the Lord? How will the church be activated? How will we participate? How, how will we participate and be all hands on deck in the harvest, reaping souls for Jesus, leading the lost to Christ so that they can be saved where would we be if nobody told us about Jesus? How will they hear if there's no messenger? And how can the messenger preach if he's not sent? How can we continue as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and not win souls? How can we continue and, and see and the dream of a life of Christianity where we do not minister to the needs of the lost and to the broken and the world is crying, and the world is groaning, and the nations are groaning, and they're in travail and in birth pangs. And you look at the news and see what's going on, the rioting, the racism, the abortions, the gay rights, the, the gender issues, the political correctness, the, they're screaming out for answers, and they, they want to make sense of it all, and now they've got this whole evolution doctrine religion devilish imagination it's absolute rubbish they want to actually inform you that at the same time when 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 this whole big bang took place at the very same time that the first form of life showed and appeared in itself there was the the animal or the organic but then there was also the plant kingdom remember everything hinges upon each other and is dependent upon each other it's not just humans it's animals it's plants it's insects reptiles it's fish it's birds okay there's water there's oxygen all of it had to happen at the same and so evolution the big bang they're not talking about what one big bang they're talking about 10 or 20 different big bangs that happened at the same time at the same moment for all of these different kingdoms for the plants for the animals for us to be directly or exactly this that that far away from the sun and all that rubbish they want to push it down and you can't debate about it you can't voice your opinion you can't criticize it you you just got to shut up and you got to keep quiet and you got to comply Otherwise, you're a rebel and you're a religious fanatic and they censor you because they don't want to offend. It's time to offend the world in Jesus' name, but not by power and by might. It's time to walk in the love of Jesus, in the power of the resurrected Christ, to heal the sick, cast out devils, to walk in the authority, in the presence, in the likeness of the Christ. The world will be, of, of course... The principalities, they don't want Christ. They want they are antagonistic. They're fighting with everything they got. Satan wants to bring and drag their souls to hell. Hell was never meant for human beings. It's a terrible place, void of the mercy of God. That's not the place that people should go to. And so we the church, what are we what what's our excuse for not evangelizing? Oh, but we're afraid and we what what what? True. People feel awkward standing up in a street corner. Awkward, I mean, it's awkward. but you know why it's awkward? Because it's awkward when you pray as well. That's why you can't pray in front of people. It's awkward because you are more aware of what they think than you're aware of your relationship with God. And so when you practice the presence, when you pray in tongues, meldi, nunga, raba, katelimingu, more and more, you get boldness. And you are grounded. 
and you rooted and you stabilized and you planted and you will not be moved and you're not ashamed of the gospel and you don't make excuses for being a Christian. And you don't apologize for being who God says you are and for, make, for, for God making you exactly who you are. Why, how can you apologize for being what God made you? It's evil. It's wicked. It's terrible. So how can we make excuses for the gospel? You can't. It's time for the church to be on the offensive and not the defensive. It's time, time to rise up and preach the gospel. But it's got to be motivated by love. It's got to be inspired by love. It's got to be the, the intention of our hearts. Got to be pure, no hidden agendas, no ulterior motives. It's got to be because of souls, because of the love of God, because we love Jesus and we know the value of a soul. That the soul is worth the life of the Son of God. That's where we come. I hope you're still praying in tongues. Meruzata kabakote. And so we're going to rise up and it's going to be um, it's going to be unstoppable. It's going to be an army of God, an army of evangelistic, prophetic, apostolic, pastoral teachers that will rise up. Everyone, the saints, all the fivefold in one as you manifest in sonship. And when you are walking in sonship, then at the art of Isaac, every one of these fivefold gifts, offices, has got to be operating in your life. Every one of them. You can't just be operating in one. There are offices and they can differ. But the saints must operate in all five because the fivefold is there to equip the body for the edifying of the saints until we come forth in the image of and likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, until... So there is an until, and we will come forth. The body of Christ will come forth in the image and likeness of the Lord Jesus, that the image of God will be restored. The glory of God will be upon us again. This is the gospel. This is the good news. This is the work of the kingdom, the work of salvation, the work of the Holy Spirit, and the testimony of the blood of Jesus that speaks for us. This is what it's all about so that we can be clothed again with the glory of God and walk in His image and likeness and look like Jesus, talk like Jesus, smile like Jesus. But we're, how are we going to do that if we don't know Him? How are we going to do that if we don't fellowship with Him? How are we going to be the evangelist and how are we going to get the world saved? We're going to feel awkward. We're going to be self-conscious. We're, not going to, we're going to be feeling ashamed. We don't want to offend anybody. And you're going to go into that mainstream, into the, into the current. It's just, it's just taking many people. If you don't resist, they don't want you to resist. They just want you to go with the flow. The biggest problem for a one world government is the church. It's not other religions. The biggest problem for the world going on without God the, the thing that's stopping this whole thing from working is the saints. It's the kingdom of God that's in the world. So welcome to the kingdom of God. And the least in the kingdom is greater than John, John the Baptist. So we are in the kingdom of God. This is, this is our privilege. It's time to rise up and not go on purpose to try and offend people, but to rise up in the presence of the Lord that those who will be offended you can't help it, but you can't not walk in the presence of the Lord because you're afraid of offending other people. Jesus said, blessed are those who are not offended with me. These, these people are going to be offended because you, you are not keeping quiet about Jesus. And, but don't try and do it in your own ability and in your own efforts and in your willpower. And in your and the, the strength of the soul and the soul man and the realm of reasoning, because then you're gonna offend people without the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. Many people are losing their lives because they are preaching from here. Then there's not it's not flowing from here. And the world can see whether or not you love them. The world can see whether you're just busy with a job and you're talking about Jesus because it's your job. Or the world can see whether you're talking about him because you, you are talking in sincerity and you know him and you love him and you love souls. And that kind of anointing and that kind of ministry is going to get people saved. It's going to get a generation saved. 
and you've got your role to play and you've got a part to play. Mandu Sikiti. Let's pray in tongues for five more minutes, then we jump into the word of God. Well, that was by the Spirit. I didn't want to speak on anything, but the Reba Gazakata. So it's not just for evangelism, it's for your work situation, it's for everything. Praying in tongues, spending time in fellowship with the Holy Spirit has got everything to do with whether or not you're going to be a successful Christian businessman or woman in this time to come, in this era, in this new time. Because the world is going further away from Christ. You can't live in this world and do things the way they're doing it and be a Christian, there's got to be a distinguishing thing. There's got to be a, di a difference between the way you, the difference is the kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness. And so how, how can we sustain the work of the ministry and the blessing in business and education and every area? How can we sustain the anointed fruit of God? It's by abiding in the vine. Abiding in the vine. How can we live? Life was never meant to be lived without the presence of the Lord in our lives. How can you? It's a foreign concept. I can't imagine living my life anymore without the presence of the Lord. It's it's a terrible thought. It's a it's a it's a it's um. Let's go to John. Take your Bibles. Manda zeki bakuto robota. Bembro zepra pasiketa bango dosa. Librin dono jutu cabra. Vrede zita la ga zeki teba. Greza. Sheka baga dega zeki taba. Kose kiti pengineng indo robota bambre dizo. Felvendus mastedero. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. John chapter 16. What a beautiful night we had last night. Man, that was beautiful. So let's go. John chapter 16. And please get your Bibles and read with. My hot chocolate is cold now. But we've got the communion elements. <laughs> we've got some oil. I'm going to anoint you guys and. And we're going to have some communion. I'm going to take up an offering as well. We're going to just worship God and, 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 and have an opportunity to get into soul winning. Soul winning. That's what it's. That's the fruit of righteousness. That's the fruit. Let's go. John chapter 16 from verse 1. If you've got your Bibles. Holy Spirit. Lord, just talk to us tonight, Lord. From your word. Open our ears to hear. Give us a receptive heart, Lord. Give us a receptive, a, a fruitful heart. Let the ground be fruitful in our hearts in Jesus' name. For the seed of the word to bring forth a hundredfold harvest. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father. In the name of Jesus, speak to us. John chapter 16, verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Oh! I, I didn't realize. John chapter 16 verse 1 says, talks about offense. Cabra, casa, catalabato. Now, now, now that's the spirit of the Lord. I mean, I was just praying in tongues and interpreting. We've been talking about offense, but listen here. Yeah. I didn't read it. I didn't realize it's talking about offense here in John chapter 16. That's the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us. Now listen. Man, these things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. So, so we read John 14 and 15 and here is John 16. The Lord is speaking to us. Lord, help us not to be offended. They shall put you out of synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Many people are thinking they're doing God's will. 
And they want to abolish poverty and they want to abolish the plagues and they want to do all of that. And they don't want to offend and they want to they want to do good things. I'm thinking of Bill Gates and the Bill Gates Foundation. But but they're doing it in a natural thing. And, and you know what they want to do? They want to depopulate the, the population. They, they want to sift out the weeds of humanity. That's how they put it. And that's where all these Planned Parenthood clinics, synagogues of Satan comes from. And look at where they build the Planned Parenthood clinics, in what communities they build it. They, they, it's a, it's a satanic thing. It's, it's, and they, their intentions are good. They're thinking they're doing good, because it's scientifically they, they think well, the, we need less people and we need to control and we want to abolish crime and they want to do all these things in, a, in a, for a good, but they are so deceived. There's a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof is death. And those who try and save their lives shall lose it. But those who lose their lives for my sake, they shall, they shall win it. And so, listen to this, verse 2. They shall put you out of synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever ever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. But these, verse 3, and these things will they do unto you. Because they have not known the Father, nor me. Verse 4. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I have told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But... Because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. We cannot live this life ignorant of the presence of the Lord that is available, the present presence of the Holy Spirit. We can't live this life. We can't afford to live this life. The Holy Spirit is, we need the Holy Spirit. We need contact with Him. And He doesn't ask you to come perfect. Show up with all your baggage, man. Show up and even though your head says you're a hypocrite, because sometimes we are our own worst enemies. And we are our own worst critics. Alright? And we criticize ourselves. And we're hard on ourselves. And we, we allow that to keep us from the presence of the Lord. Where change comes from. Through change comes from within. Go with your sin. Go with your rubbish. Your, your chamosh. Go with it and be real. And say, Lord, I have these desires in my heart. I have these cravings in my flesh. I have this pride in my life. I have this, this, whatever it is. Be real. Come with your baggage. Come with sinfulness. Come to God. He says, a broken heart and a contrite spirit I will not despise. There was the publican and the sinner. And the publican was praying and said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like this sinner over here. Or uh, not the publican, excuse me, the Pharisee. The Pharisee. Oh, I'm so glad I don't have that guy, that sin like that guy. And the sinner beat on his chest with tears in his eyes, the Lord said. And he said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinful man. Whose prayer do you think the Father heard? You know what is hypocrisy in God's eyes? When you come to him and you think you don't need him. You think you need him less than other people. That is hypocrisy. That will keep you out of the presence. You are a haughty look. The pride of life. You, we cannot, we don't qualify to judge anybody that sin differently than we do. We like to judge people by their actions. And we judge ourselves by our intentions. 
Oh, the Lord knows my heart. But you're going on and you're going on with your sin. You're going on. You treat people like rubbish. You continue because there's no conviction of the Holy Spirit. There's no fear of God. And you think you're high and mighty and you think there's the Pharisees. And we have to come to God. And what I'm trying to say now by the Spirit of the Lord is that we have to come just as we are. Maybe you don't want to pray. Then rather than going to pray and acting like you're the biggest spiritual giant and you're so holy and so righteous, maybe go to go and have fellowship with the Lord and tell Him, Lord, today I don't feel like praying. I want to do that and that and that and that. But I've come to you. Because you said in your word you make a way of escape with every temptation. Maybe the temptation is just to sit and do nothing. Maybe, maybe the temptation is just to have a normal, not a normal, but to continue just with lukewarm Christianity. Maybe that's a temptation. Just not to go too deep with God and well, I'm happy I'm saved and I've, I'm saved. I'm going and praise the Lord. But but there's just no desire. There's no passion. There's no zeal anymore. There's no fire. There's no love. Okay. You got to go. But you, let's just say you are in a condition where you are lukewarm. Admit it. Confess your sin before the Father. Be real. Jesus knows you're lukewarm. Go to him and say, Lord. My heart can be more in love with you. In actual fact, I desire to be in love with you. But I don't know if I am. I don't know if I have the fire in me anymore. I don't know. The world took out everything. Just, well, you know what I'm talking about. Just be real with him. Go, Because he said a broken heart and a contrite spirit I will not despise. And I guarantee you, God is going to win your heart. Just give him consent. Just show up. Give him a chance. He'll not force it on you. He's too much of a gentleman. And so, show up with all your baggage. That's not what you heard in the churches. But this is what the word says. Come, while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. This is the message that the world needs. But we want to go and tell the world what they should and shouldn't do. And we want to criticize them and judge them for acting like sinners. What do you expect from the world? They are sinners. Now you want to criticize them for being sinners. Why don't you rather preach the gospel to them? Who am I talking to tonight? Somebody's tuned in here that needed to hear this. We like to criticize everyone. We're looking at the news and we're sitting here criticizing. And now you don't have news anymore. All you have is a talking head that's criticizing everybody. And you're sitting there because they criticize the same way that you criticize. You enjoy watching them criticize people. And that's not right. Stop criticizing the world if you're not willing to lay down your life for them and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to them and get them saved. How can we criticize? How can we choose sides? How can we say, oh, that's better and that's better and those people, and, but you haven't preached the gospel to them. You can't say anything. You are the one with the word of life. You're the one with the message. You're the one with the solution. You're the one with the answer. But when it comes time to send an evangelist to go and preach, you can't, you can't give a tithe. You can't give a hundred rand. Because, yeah, it's all about money again. Look at this evangelist. He wants money. For praying for people. Guess again. I've preached my whole life without a salary. I never ever had a salary. For preaching the gospel ever in my life. Up until the, this day. Never. I preach the gospel. Without getting paid. I don't go and ask people for money. You know what? God wants you to participate in soul winning. Stop criticizing. Stop. You don't know. 
You don't know what it cost me to win souls when nobody else was seeing me. Nobody else looked at the ministry. Nobody else saw. Nobody cared. Churches, no, they, but I was there with a good attitude preaching the gospel because I love souls and I love Jesus. And I was walking with Jesus and he took care of me. Make no mistake. People sowed and gave money into my personal life. But I never ask people. I give people an opportunity. I never go around asking people for partners and make appointments in coffee shops to have breakfasts with the influential people of the town. Like all the pastors do. They are busy with coffee. I don't know how much coffee you can drink. But they're having maybe 10 breakfasts and 10 coffees with different people trying to get money. I'm not like that. And there's a whole generation that's not like that. I can't picture it. It's something inside of me that's grieved. The Spirit of God is grieved over that. But there is a place where you stop criticizing and get on board and get in line and jump in and all hands on deck and be part of the body of Christ. Be part of the kingdom of God where you help, where you don't complain, where you stop criticizing and judging and judging other people and complaining about Wah, wah, wah. No, stop complaining about if you have the word of God and you gave your life to Jesus and you have the answer to this world's problems, then you and I are the least qualified. We're in the least likely position to judge the nations of the world for being sinners when we have failed to preach the gospel to them. You can't, how, what sick, perverted spirit is that that's coming to the church wanting to criticize people groups and races, different people groups and ethnicities than you, different denominations than you, different political parties than you, different nations, different governments. We want to criticize the communists, we want to criticize the Islam states, we want to criticize, but we haven't gone to preach the gospel. And when a man of God that preaches the gospel takes up an offering, you can't even give a hundred rand. Because, oh, it's all about money. Hey, it's not about the money, it's about the souls. Souls need to get saved and it's going to take everyone. It's going to take people joining hands, the body of Christ, working together. The Lord is blessing people to do business. He's anointed me to preach the gospel. He's blessing people to be ble a blessing to the kingdom of God. It's not your smarts and your education. It's the blessing of the Lord that makes rich. You are blessed. And some of you are watching. You're really blessed. You've got houses and cars and you've got businesses. You've got things. This, this, you so blessed. Participate in the kingdom of God. He said, Thou shalt remember the Lord your God who gives you the power to obtain wealth. It's God that gives you. Many people are sitting with degrees today. Many people are sitting with education and they've got PhDs and, and they can't find work. Look, even in South Africa, People are staying in squatter camps with edu university education, degrees. They can't find work. It's, it's not your... How, and they can work and they can do it. And they're very prolific and, and, and able-bodied. And they can work and they can provide services. And they work hard, but they, there's just no opportunity. You know, it's the Lord that gives you the the opportunities and the power to obtain wealth. You can sit with all your degrees. If you don't have a job, that doesn't mean a thing. What are you going to do with that? If you don't have a form of, in, if you understand what I'm saying, there is the, the blessing of the Lord is number one. And the least we can do is to be obedient and responsive to the frontline ministers of the gospel that I'm talking to you. The frontline ministers of the gospel that's preaching in Muslim 
there's missionaries and evangelists in Israel preaching their hearts out to the Jews today. And you think the, the church wants to sponsor, I know many of them that's preaching, they've dedicated their lives to preach the gospel and they are living in absolute poverty. They are praying and fasting just to put food on the table so their children can eat. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, the church is taking up offerings to go and plant trees and to rebuild a temple for God that he said in his word that we are the temple of God. But the church is putting their funds to, because of just stupidity, just absolute, just blindness, just hardness of heart. What about let's go preach the gospel in Israel instead of trying to build, a, to plant trees and to build, rebuild a temple? How? And they are taking up offerings and the churches are sponsoring it. It's an abomination in the eyes of God. Now, these, there are those that are ministering in the front lines. And the least we can do when God has blessed us is to stop criticizing and finding fault and always trying to be right and having a haughty look. And let's get behind some of the frontline ministers. And I'm not just talking about myself. I'm talking about, you know many people. I'm sure you know some people that's working and winning souls. How about blessing them? How about asking the Lord, Lord, what can I do to bless them? What can I do? You've done so much for me. What can, how can I be a blessing? How can I help the kingdom? And stop watching all the news channels that criticize the same way you criticize and stop feasting on that. That, that, that say of the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm not picking on anybody or stepping on anybody's toes or um, I'm not trying to play games with anybody. I'm speaking to a spiritual a, a, a spirit in people in this age the spirit of the age I'm speaking to a spirit that is infiltrated now I'm using this as an example the but it's infiltrated churches it's infiltrated the body of Christ but the Lord is saying he would not have us criticize if we're not willing to preach the gospel in fact the only ministry that we have received of God the Father is the ministry of reconciliation. We have not received yet the ministry of judgment. We have only the ministry of reconciliation. To, to reconcile nation. No, to reconcile not nation with nation and denomination with other. To reconcile people with God. To reconcile the nations with the Father. We have peace with our Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Get the people to Jesus. We can all, no matter what congregation or denomination you are from, when if you are saved and you love Jesus, we can all agree on the importance of soul winning and the preaching of the gospel. All of us. It unites the people. And we can all agree, if you are really born again and saved, we can all agree on the importance of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Fellowship, practicing the presence, being in the presence of the Lord and enjoying Him and being intimate with Him and worshiping Him. and We all agree across the board. Any Christian, any denomination will agree because the Spirit of God is inside of us. And He is one. He's not in division. He's not separating within Himself. He's not a kingdom divided. So we can agree that evangelism is, in, is important. And we can agree <laughs> agree. That a top priority is fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And if you've got those two, what are we worried? What are we fighting about? What are we divided about? There's work to do. You know, when people are idle, 
when churches are not doing ministry, when they're busy and busy bodies and they're busy with admin and they're busy with everything except the presence of the Lord and soul winning, then people are idle and idle hands is the devil's play playground. You know, when people aren't busy with the eternal purposes of God, then they start finding fault and judging. If you've spent one week in the front lines of evangelism, if you have been where I have seen people spend their entire lives, missionaries and evangelists, and their lives are on the line almost on a daily basis, you're just too glad to find believers. You're just so glad, no matter what the denomination or background or what, 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 you just want to have fellowship with believers. You're just so glad that people are saved when you get back home. If you spend one week and your life is on the line and you're preaching the gospel, especially in the Muslim areas, you come back, you don't want to fight about the color of the curtains and whether or not now we should have a 11 o'clock service or a 10 o'clock service. That's, and people, there's church, church splits because of that. It's the spirit of the age. It's the spirit of the world. It's the mainstream thing. It's a demon. It's a spirit. It's an it's a evil thing. Let's stop that. Let's get radical for Christ. Let's lay down our lives for, for the work of the kingdom and know what is important and what is just small talk, and unimportant and things that's just absolutely not even relevant. And people lose their faith. They lose their peace over these quarrelings and these strivings and these uh, strife and, and backbiting and gossiping and and judgments and criticism and accusations and legalistic arguments and, and they think they're doing God's work. No, uh, God's work. No, 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 no. Let's let's focus. There's a work to be done. There's work to do. They, they in the presence of the Lord, we we will find the answers. We will find the solutions. But let's get our priorities straight because we are being distracted by nitty gritty stuff. We're being distracted by small chicken feed things. The little unimportant, insignificant, irrelevant rubbish that Satan is the little foxes. That Satan is using to bring division in churches when he knows when, when there is a vital work for us to do, we have to unite in the presence of the Lord and in soul winning. The rest is details. It's, got, it's not important. I would want to know nothing amongst any man except Christ and Him crucified. Wow, the Lord is speaking tonight. I didn't pl plan on anything like this. Anyway. Yeah, so I guess that's a good place to take up an offering. If you want to support revival evangelism, prophetic evangelism, and my ministry, loveborn.net is the website. All the banking details and everything is on there. PayPal.me forward slash loveborn. And also the banking details I will put on the Facebook page and on the comments uh, after the broadcast. So sow and be blessed as you sow in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And don't be manipulated by what I said. It's not, I'm not trying to manipulate anybody. Don't be intimidated. Be only obedient to the Holy Spirit. That's all that's required. <laughs> Just be obedient to what He purposes in your heart that He says to you, give. Don't go and just give as he will with a smile please if you don't smile while giving don't i don't want your money if you don't do it with a cheerful heart and neither does the lord he doesn't need your money all right neither does his kingdom neither but you get to participate do it with a smile do it cheerfully as unto the lord you understand and that's the place where where you operate in faith in thanksgiving in gratitude and you're participating with the body of Christ into an eternal purpose. Is there 
is their purpose in life? What are the things that are of value in this life? Is it cars and houses and how much Gucci shirts and techies and nonsense you can buy? What's the other one? Louis Vuitton in whatever. I'm not, I don't want any lawsuits on my end, but wonderful if you got that money. The Lord, of course, He wants you to wear the best. Praise Jesus. But not at the expense of soul winning, not at the expense of being and participating in the kingdom of God. What does it help you walking around, you driving your Lamborghini or your Bentley and you living in your triple story house, your mansion on the hill and you eating the best of the best, you wearing all the best clothes, but you haven't put a cent into the kingdom of God. What does that help you? That's, that's, you understand? So, so in the past, in the Old Testament, when, not in the old, in the new as well, when you give God the first fruits or the tithe, when you give God the first fruits or the tithe, it redeems the rest of the money. It makes it holy. It redeems it. It, it, does, it The devourer is rebuked on your behalf. When you give God your time and you redeem your time and you pay a tithe or not pay, you give a tithe. You don't pay tithes, you give tithes. So you give a tithe of your time and it might be a stretch. You give an hour or two and a half hours of your 24 hours to the Lord. Do you know that that first fruit can redeem the rest of your day? And what would have taken up most of your time will be sorted out by the hand of the Lord. And you'll be more productive and do more things for the Lord than ever before. Because you have tithed, you have redeemed with the first fruit. You've redeemed the rest of it. Uh, a little leaven. The kingdom of God is like leaven also. So when you give God what is in your hand and that seed, and you plant a seed, you redeem the rest of the income. You redeem the rest of your time. Hallelujah. Give God what is His in the first place. Praise the Lord. Let's continue to read. I'm just going to read up until 12. Verse 12. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, this is John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Jesus, the firstborn. Jesus, the firstborn. The first fruit. God gave the first fruit. And it redeemed the whole lump. It redeemed the whole church. <laughs> but there was a seed that was sown. And a precious seed. The first fruit. It redeemed the world. Hallelujah. But because I have said verse 6. Oh, sorry, verse 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. And of righteousness and of judgment. So listen to this. Of sin because they believe not on me. So what is the Holy Spirit speaking to the nations that the ungodly nations, the heathen, those that are pouring into hell? What is he convicting them or reproofing them of? Of sin. What is sin? He explains it here. Because they believe not on me. That's the sin of the world. There's many works of the flesh, but the sin of the world is that they don't believe in Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is convicting the world of sin because they don't believe in Jesus. It's not convicting them because of the works of the flesh and so on. He's going for the root. The root is they don't believe. Of righteousness. Now who's righteous? Us. Who's been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. 
So what does that mean? Why are we righteous? Because he's gone up to the Father and he's offered his blood in the mercy seat and his blood now speaks for us. And you are redeemed because of the blood of Jesus that's worthy, worthy and that has been accepted in the mercy seat, in the eyes of God. Because he was with the lamb without spot or wrinkle, without blemish, perfect, no sin in him. And he took upon himself the sin of the whole world. And if you don't have Jesus in your heart and in your life right now, and what I've been saying tonight has touched you, and the Holy Spirit's convicting you, then pray this prayer with me right now. Just, just pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you love me. Amen. I believe that you love me. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Son of the living God. Forgive my sin. I need a relationship with you. Make me your child. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. So we have victory. Satan is absolutely defeated. The Holy Spirit convicts us of the fact that Satan is under our feet. Because the prince of the world has already been judged. And verse 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Praise the Lord. So Lord, thank you for your word. Let's partake in communion. Let's have some communion tonight. It's a Friday night. It's a cold Friday night here in Clark's door, but I can go on the whole night. But I feel we're going to stop there. We'll read tomorrow evening. We'll have a prophetic prayer storm. I want to talk about fasting um, a little bit, but we're going to pray for people. We're going to do prophecies. We're going to pray in tongues, we practice the presence, and we're going to read the word. So it's going to be a whole revival service. Just everything poured into one, and we're just going to flow, flowing in the Spirit. Many of these broadcasts, there's only prayer, or there's only the word, or there's sometimes just worship, or there's sometimes just a prophetic teaching, or prophecy, or prayer requests, or whatever. It's in different categories, and in different segments and sessions. But the actual aim of the Holy Spirit is for you to have a balance and to flow in all of them at the same time. And so the prophetic prayer storms is to flow in the Spirit. And whether there's prophecies or whether there's... And later on, you'll start flowing and you'll read the word and a scripture will come up. And then you'll spontaneously just start singing in tongues. And then you'll pray for so-and-so and and that person there and they'll come up in your heart. And then you'll start soaking and you'll just be quiet and be still and know that I am God. But it's not set times, but now you're starting to flow. And when that happens, then you're practicing the presence of the Lord. But before then, we are practicing the presence. And so tomorrow night, we're just going to flow. Get your communion elements ready. Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for keeping. Thank you for all the faithful people. Thank you for blessing us with your and honoring us with your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight was a bit different. I just wanted to pray in tongues, but the Lord was speaking about certain things. Hallelujah. And that's what's on his heart. So, Father, forgive us for the times... You have your elements, your, your the, the body and the blood of Jesus. So let's pray. Father, forgive us for the times where we have judged sinners for being sinners and not recognized that you judge them for their sin because they don't believe in Jesus. That is the very thing. So how can we judge sinners for acting like sinners? If they don't believe in Jesus. That's the biggest thing. Leave the 99. Go after the one. I did not come. The sick or the the healed don't need a physician. But the sick. The sick need a physician. That's why Jesus came. He came for the sick and to seek and 
save that which was lost. He came for sinners. That's the reason He came. And that's our mandate. The Great Commission. The Great Commission. The one commission that we have as the be believers is go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. That was it. He didn't say and go and plant a church and build a big tower in the church and put in seats and aircons and hang curtains and I want orange curtains and I want a, a big wooden pulpit. And no, 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 no. No, that's all good and well, but that's that's a building. Go and preach. So, Father, forgive us for the times where we have judged the world. We don't want to stand criticizing the world, criticizing sinners for being sinners. Lord, but we want to preach the gospel to them. And Lord, if they if some will be offended because of your presence and your love and your mercy on our lives and your goodness, then Lord, help us. Help us not to willfully offend anybody, but help us to walk in the presence of the Lord and look like Jesus and open our arms and forgive and give solutions. Lord, cancel the plans of Satan because you have defeated him on the cross of Calvary. You defeated Satan, Lord. And the nations belong to you. They do not belong to some one world government or some deep state or some united nation or uh, whatever Illuminati nonsense. The nations belong to Jesus. And you said it is finished. And you said that you have already got the, given us the victory. So Father, though there's persecution, though there's troubles, though they, they try to kill us and they think they're doing your will, Help us to remain in faith and believing and expecting the best of everybody that we meet. Repent, we repent. We confess our sins. We come tonight just as we are. With all our baggage and all our failures, none of us profess to be absolutely perfect. Your word declares that he who says he has no sin is a liar. So we come fallible, mortal, weak, frail, desperately in need of you. We come knowing that we need you. We come knowing that your strength can be made perfect in our weakness. So take over, Lord. And as we partake, Lord, those of us that are struggling financially, that are struggling to have find food to eat, that are struggling with Losing their job, losing, Lord, troubles surrounding people, circumstances on every side. They're surrounding your people, Lord. With sickness and pain and disease and torment. Those of us, Lord, that are in a serious need of your intervention. I pray tonight that as we partake of your broken body and your shed blood, that our lives will be completely lined up with your promises in your word that our lives will look like your promises and it will testify of your faithfulness in Jesus name for all of us Lord for every business owner for every marriage all your children all your family relations your friendships your relationships the work of your hands your sphere of influence and your networks your past, present and future, your spirit, soul and body. Lord, we come to you, we ask that you cover us with the precious blood of Jesus and that you keep us safe so that no plague will come near our dwelling. Heal those who are sick and in disease and distress and discomfort and pain and suffering tonight. Have mercy. Let your precious anointing and healing virtue enter every physical body and set things right. Set people free. For those who are struggling with temptations. For those who are in need of a way of escape, Father. Provide one. Clearly show them the way. Open their eyes to see. Take off the blindfolds of a people. And invite them, Lord, urgently into your presence. 
and send laborers to bring them in, Lord, so that husbands will be saved, sons and daughters will turn to Christ in Jesus' name. Lord, even employees and employers. Lord, there will be those who are watching right now that receive an impartation and an activation of practicing the present presence of the Holy Spirit, who, whose hearts are being one, that there is a love of God that's being poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit tonight and an awakening of love. Lord, that will not be quenched. Many waters will not quench it in the name of Jesus. And that, Lord, that from tonight, that people's lives will never be the same again, that no one will remain the same, but that there will be true change and lasting change that takes place on the inward parts and our in, innermost man tonight as the Holy Spirit anointing is being transferred through the airwaves in Jesus' name. Upon the one holding that cell phone or watching on the computer or television, Lord, that there will be an anointing of the Holy Spirit that is imparted and transferred right now in the name of Jesus as we partake of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Mm. Hot cross buns, man. <laughs> mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Make us a voice to the nations, Lord. Give us a voice, give us boldness. Ma bra ba ba zeku. Thank you, Jesus. Sam bram binum guzakata. I put some oil on my finger. Lord. Lord Jesus. Let that anointing be imparted. Let the yokes be destroyed in Jesus' name. Anoint us to prosper. Empower us to create wealth. Anoint us. Anoint us with ease. An anointing of ease where open doors and opportunities will just flow. An ability, supernatural ability and endowment of power from on high. You know that when the, the prophets used to anoint kings in the Old Testament, and they anointed David. And when they anointed these kings, the, David was just a shepherd boy. But when the anointing came on him as for kingship, the ability of God came upon him. That was what the anointing was symbolic of. It is a, a shepherd boy sitting in the, in the fields, Minding the sheep, but now there came an anointing that came upon him, and it was an endowment of power and ability, supernatural ability. It was God's ability that was imputed or imparted or transferred into them. So tonight, when I anoint this lens, receive the enablement and ability of Christ and give him your inability and your infirmity your inability to produce results desired results your inability your shortcomings your failures your weakness your struggle give it to him cast it to the Lord to the cross of Calvary and receive his ability you give him your inability and you receive his ability. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I anoint the person watching right now. In Jesus' name. With the ability and the supernatural endowment of power from on high. 
in the name of Jesus. Sordomos kare velepe in your business, in your ministry, in the work of your hands, in your family, in your marriage, in your relationships, in your friendships, in your in the name of Jesus. Sebro babus keto patara bakite demento. Lemando no mozoto kurobo sokuto. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ke bagadagarokote. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. An endowment of power from an eye. For those of you that want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this is the time. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Speak now in faith in the name of Jesus. Zedra bakute kalama. Oh, brendeni misaka denga la shekita baromo sekita ba. Vrezutri tastira la ba shakandene. Ela zebristu rabasta. There is power here. There is power. Saganga skidai. O hargal vestu shagregiskerdo. Let the fire of God come upon you. In Jesus' name. Selamasha takabakote. Zebro sutalabande. Thank you, Father. Amen. Sada baga, shohorobo soto botebari. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Father. Amen. Guys, thank you. Bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow again or whenever you can tune in and please do share do share keep on sharing these broadcasts and we want this message to go out and thank you for for just joining me in the presence of the lord and uh, i love you guys and the lord jesus loves you amen thank you bye bye